I did damage. a show. I did a show on perfectionism. Perfectionism kills. Death to perfectionism was the title of the episode. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Jason's hitting home with Jason. I Abram. identify way too. <laughs> Dudes to Dads is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We are back. Now, this is episode... Well, I don't know the number episode, but <laughs> it's the second part yes. of our interview with Mr. Alan Brown. Yes. Uh, productivity coach. Yes. For those of you who are not catching just this one, you got to go listen Back to one part, episode. Yeah, part yeah. one. Um, a lot of great stuff. By awesome way. stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're talking ADD, ADHD, uh, ways to deal with it, how to recognize it in the first episode, or I should say the first part. Why am I having trouble with that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and now this is part two. So what I wanted to do in part two is a couple things. I wanted to uh, reintroduce Alan, of course, yep. and talk more specific about men. And dads and ADHD and how, you know, we deal with it and how um, a little how it hits a little bit more home for us. Um, and even us, we were talking in during the the break about yeah. the stuff that we deal with and ways sure. to, to that, you know, we can we can see how this affects us. as yeah, well. We basically relate to a lot, lot of the of traits, a lot yeah. of the traits and things. People Kinda ended on that. With yeah. AD, even if you're not AD diagnosed traits. with it. There yeah. are things that, as a productivity coach, mm. Alan can really help us with. Oh, absolutely. You know? I mean, there are things, you know, these, he calls them hacks um, of being more productive, concentrating, getting tasks done. I mean, those kinds of things. Everyone can benefit from For that. Sure. So, absolutely. Um, so we'll talk about that. I want to, and then I also, um, towards the end, want to get into some actual tips. Yeah. So, you know, some maybe five tips that we can, you know, use and, uh, or that our listeners can use to, uh, to, you know, deal with the ADHD yeah. and to do that. So, Alan, welcome back, although we've just been you know, sitting here. <laughs> we took a break. <laughs> Thank you again, back. <laughs> um, so that's what I wanted to start with was, um, you know, as a dad um, and just as a man in general, you had mentioned that, you know, a lot, first of all, in the, in the previous one, you'd mentioned a lot of people are going around just undiagnosed. Right. Um, but we also men don't seem to be seeking help. You know, and that's kind of we have that theme We've had here. Episodes. Yeah. We have that theme here where women are the ones who are often, you know, getting the help and looking for stuff. In fact, I said with my local meetup, there are many of a guy, many guys that will come in and go, well, my wife said I should come. You know? like, Why are you here? That's what yeah. we asked. Like, well, I, my wife thought it would be a good idea yeah, and they're honest. But um, so <laughs> what's your experience with that? Well, it, it is so, so true. And it's, it, you know, it's funny. You guys just had a great episode recently on stereotypes of dads, but this, <laughs> this stereotype is well-deserved. Yes. Um, but I just want to reiterate something that we talked about in the first part, which is that uh, about 4.5% of the adult population is ADHD. Okay. It, it's a myth that this thing ends after childhood. It, it doesn't for two thirds of uh, kids with ADHD. It just continues into, into adulthood. And so there are about 9 million adults in the U.S. alone with ADHD. 85% of whom, 7 point some million, don't know it. So they're walking around trying to figure out, well, why am I having so much trouble doing my job when my colleague next to me can get so much done or, or right. whatever? Or why am I always kind of getting in trouble with my wife for this, that, or the other thing? Um, and so we need to just recognize that, you know, if you know one person who's diagnosed with HD, there are probably six people that you know that are ADHD that that aren't that are diagnosed. diagnosed. Yeah, yeah. And to, yeah. to the point that you were making before, um, yeah, uh, most of the, I speak uh, in Europe and the US and I do uh, uh, support group presentations all over the place and I'm always getting a woman, a wife coming to me and saying, can you help me talk to my husband? He refuses to come to the support group or he refuses to acknowledge. I mentioned before, my father was, you know, refused to acknowledge that he might have ADHD despite he, every single sign in the is world. Is it ego? Had. I mean, what is the, 
Is that just it? I mean, I, I think it's partly ego. You know, think about it. It's a terrible name, attention deficit disorder. <laughs> and by the way, until the '90s, it was called minimal brain dysfunction. Ugh. I mean, wow. imagine. You know, you couldn't come up with a cooler name. Minimal you, you brain could, dysfunction. Like, uh, like attention. Um, surplus uh, <laughs> bonus overactivity gold medal yeah <laughs> stud leanness yeah I mean something is that, that too least, long something that was at least yeah attractive it's not catchy but <laughs> yeah yeah but, but yeah it's hard I mean, to have a website with that address <laughs> I, I just bought the URL you know but think about being a nine year old and being told that yeah son you have attention deficit disorder I mean yeah. awful it's just awful but so I think yeah the ego and the stigmatization that goes with it uh, is part of it. I think also that, you know, we talked before about some of the myths that, you know, it doesn't exist or it's a pharma conspiracy. Well, you said only boys, too. Yeah, yeah and I mean, everyone, everyone one of the myths is that it's yeah. only boys and that you outgrow it. So, you know, uh, I could see where uh, a guy um, who is getting into a little bit of trouble with his employer, or his, you know, his wife's getting frustrated or he's kind of letting down his kids on this or that, maybe, or whatever, um, can say, you know what, that, that, that's not the issue. I just need to try harder or I just need to this or it's some other reason. Or, or you know what? I just don't want to hear about it. Leave me alone. Or medicate with yeah. some alcohol or drugs or something. Yeah. Oh like yeah. That. And yeah. I I yeah. did I did yeah. ten years of that. That yeah. real real hard. So yeah. So what you have very often are the moms uh, and the wives that are out there getting you know going online doing the research um, right. and then you know yeah. buying the products or buying the books for their husband or dragging them by the ear um, you know kicking and screaming into a support group etc. I see this every month. I speak at a place learning development services here. In San Diego, and I said, there's always one wife who comes in with the husband behind her going, <laughs> but by the end of it, or a mom bringing in her teen. This is another thing for our dads. You know, a, a 17-year-old teen who, you know, may have been diagnosed, uh, may even have been treated at one point, but just doesn't want to deal with it, doesn't want to hear about it anymore. And so we just had a mom a couple weeks ago bring her 17-year-old son, reluctantly came in, and by the end of it, he was talking to me. He was like, dude, man, thank you so much. That's and anyway. cool. No, that's good. So, I mean, you know, as a dad, and I'm not saying that our lives are any harder, but, you know, we have different experiences with the children and the stresses. So, you know, in addition to financial, you know, financial stresses and those kinds of things, we're now looking at, um, you know, all of the stresses that come with having children and, the, the, you know, the, these things that are, you know, you come home from a, a long day and, they get on your nerves or whatever else. You're now dealing with that and an inability often to know how to cope with it. This yeah. is a this is a great point because uh, I mentioned before that um, a lot of adults get diagnosed because their child gets diagnosed and they're listening to the doctor describing. Well, sir, you know ADHD is, has these traits, and you go, oh my god. I had the same thing. Uh, I was doing the same thing in high school. I just realized, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I, and then they get diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the other thing that triggers a diagnosis um, are uh, key life um, uh, life changes. Uh, stage changes, right? So when you get to college and all of a sudden your workload goes through the roof, that's when a lot of kids get uh, diagnosed. When you get out of college and now you start working in the real world and you start flailing and failing, that sometimes results in a diagnosis. When your wife says, honey, I want to divorce you because you are driving me nuts, that will sometimes get a or Having you child. have kids, and even before they grow up and get diagnosed themselves, but you have kids, and all of a sudden, just the process of having a child, responsibility, yeah. and yeah. the additional yeah. task on top of how busy you already were. Boom! I can't do this. Um, and you know, I, I, the classic one is a guy came up to me at a conference and said, "I just had twins." And I <laughs> don't totally, don't say anymore. I, know. I cannot <laughs> handle it. And please help me. Yeah. Right? No, it is. And, and, and we were talking even too. Um, you know, the, we experience these kinds of things and, and we call them traits or, or things, you know, even if we're not diagnosed, you know, we might. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of the things I had said is like with with tasks throughout my day. I mean, I work as an independent consultant, but I have so many different tasks that I think I should get done. And all of a sudden I'm working on something and something shiny new, a new task comes in yeah. that's a little bit more exciting. And then oh. all of a sudden I'm jumped to that. Yeah. And then I'm working on that for a little bit. And then guess what? A new task comes in or a new phone call comes in and all of a sudden my concentration goes there. Um, so I totally can identify Absolutely. with that kind of an, you know, that kind of situation. So it sounds like, you know, these are productivity 
hacks and productivity exercises that, you know, that Alan works with that can work really for anybody. You don't have to be diagnosed you, yeah. know, you don't have to have a quote disorder right. to be able to to be able to benefit from this. That's why I like really, your title, you know, productivity coach is like really really hones in on what the actual issues. Yeah, are. Yeah, he just happened to specialize in yeah, this one with area. A specialty in ADD. But you know. in general, we, I mean, we all this is all stuff we deal with. I mean, oh yeah, we all deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you have you said the same thing. I mean, you do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I've, when we do like as an internet marketer, you basically have one project that has so many layers to it, and uh, SEO it has a million layers to it. Then there's social media and PPC. What else? Ever else? you're doing on it then you that's just one client that right. you got to deal with several clients that have the exact same format and i happen to be a director confusing. at a company that i work at so not only do i deal with my set of clients but then i'm also dealing with other people that are in the office that need my help and need my attention and so you have shiny that, objects thrown yeah. at you all the time oh of course yeah and then i teach <laughs> and then i do this like, yeah, yeah. Right. Now, you could have just gone and been a butcher or something, yeah. and you just would have to it. deal with one thing you know, <laughs> at right, a time. Exactly. Hold on. Take a number. I'm yeah. working on this thing yeah, over yeah. here. I got to cut your chop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so quit busting mine. <laughs> so, so, so what is something we can do in that kind of situation? I mean, well, what are some tips that you can, can give yeah, us? And I just want to kind of reiterate that really, you don't have to have ADHD to feel this way. I mean, you, have just, you guys have just described the perfect storm of the kind of everyday thing that we all experience. That Ned Hollowell calls attention deficit trait. Mm-hmm. Or so many of anybody who has any kind of ambition or is working in certain kinds of jobs. Again, the butcher probably doesn't have to worry about this, or my friend of the, the, the mail carrier probably doesn't. But um, when you are confronted, and you described this beautifully one time to me, you said, "Yeah, you know, Alan, I'm sitting here and I'm looking, and there's my to to do list here, and I look at this, and I go, I should probably work on this, and I go, Oh my God! Then there's this thing. But if I do that, then this one over yeah, here, other is things are affected. The butt, <laughs> and then this, Oh my God! And I forgot about these things. These should do today too." Well, the um, the feeling that we have is that if I don't do this now, this problem, this is a problem that's going to bite me in the butt if I don't do it. So what I do is I ask folks, um, even if it's an audience of like 300 people, I'll ask everybody, okay, who here right now has a problem that if it's not dispatched with is going to bite them in the butt? Just a show of hands. You get about half of the room, right. 300 people will raise their hand. Yeah. And I'll say... Nobody here has a problem because if you had a problem, you'd be attending to it right now, right? If my sister texted me from the Jersey Turnpike at night and it's raining and her phone battery's about to die saying, I need help, that's a problem. Right. And I would get up from this chair, I'd apologize, and I'd go out in the hall and I'd make some phone calls and work it out. That's a problem. But what we do is, through the negativity bias, it's called, we sit in front of our computer screen or in front of our to-do list, uh, and we get this feeling of, holy crap, there are all these problems, and they're all going to bite me in the butt unless I do them now. So, And mine uh, can be as simple as, I don't want a customer to call me and say, why is this not done? You know, and that, I mean, that's a, could be a big problem, right. you know? And so we create these problems like in our mind, that, you know, everything becomes a problem. Right. I do that all the time for mm-hmm. sure. But if you actually stop and ask yourself, what's the worst thing that this, can happen? This, well, well, there's, there's that, but there's also, it's, this is actually kind of an Eckhart Tolle thing, but you, you ask the question, is there a problem here in the now? And the answer to the problem will typically be no, because if there were a problem among your to-do lists, you'd already be doing it. Mm -hmm. That's when there's a problem. So here's the gift that you give yourself when you do this little brain hack by just asking yourself, okay, hold on. I'm sitting down to get some work done. I know there's a gazillion things that I need to get done, but is there a problem right here in the now? And if you answer it honestly, the answer will be no. And what that does is it frees you to say, Okay, cool. So I have no problem right here in the now. I could actually sit here for a few minutes and do nothing, and there still would be no problem. What this allows me to do is it unfreezes and unfreaks out my brain, Mm -hmm. and it allows me to have a rational conversation about, all right, it's true. I've got 23 freaking things that need to get done today, but let's not go at that list from holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, problem, problem, problem. Let's go at it from, all right. What's first? Let's, what's first? Let's apply a filter to it. And then there are a whole bunch of prioritizing filters you can apply to So are it. these one, some of the exercises that you give in that's your program? That's right there yeah. is a classic a class. That's not one I teach in AD Crusher, but that's one of the ones that I teach on Crusher TV. Um, but yeah, that's just a classic way to just be more in touch with reality and get out of the drama that we all create for ourselves. And look, it's understandable. We're all kind of under siege. Uh, we're all busy and we all want to get all those to-dos done. But 
You can hack your brain to take a different view of things to go, there's no problem right here in the now. Let's just, let's just look at these things. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, another thing that I do, that particularly the way you guys are describing your day-to-day, here's another thing that I do. Once I decide on that one thing that I want to work on, I take a fresh sheet of paper or a sticky pad, and I write to-do list at the top of it. And then under that, I write that one to-do. And then everything else in, on my desk goes away or at least out of sight. And I just put that sticky down. There's my laptop. My phone is off. And I just look and I talk to it. I say to the to-do. I, I do my Joey Spoons. I go, that's you, the to-do. It's my laptop and it's my brain. It's just the three of us here. Somebody's going to get eliminated. <laughs> then we do, and you and I were talking about this recently. You do sit, it in a thick accent, though. I could, I could do a little, give me a glass of wine, forget about it. <laughs> okay, gla- two glasses of wine, I'm going full Newark on you. But, but the next thing you do is, and we were talking about this before, is single task. You just single task. You set a time. Or batch task. I mean, either way. Batch batch tasking is basically single tasking on a group of similar items. Right. But single tasking is, and I do two, three, four single tasking sessions a day. And what I do is I decide, okay, this is the thing that I'm going to be doing now. There are no problems in the world. If there were, I would be handling them already, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I got this one thing that I need to do. I need to finish writing this script or whatever, or I need to edit this uh, podcast or whatever, or I need to at least move it forward, right? So I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes, and I'm going to make a pledge to myself that because this is the thing that I'm working on, none of those other things, unless it's my sister from the Jersey Turnpike, right? (laughs) are going to pull me away. Because what we tend to do is we tend to not prioritize what's most important, but we tend to do the ADD thing, whether we're ADD or not, of prioritizing what's most interesting at the moment. Ah, yes. And that's why, that's why, and I'll give you another little bit of brain wisdom here. The reason, one of the reasons that we keep checking our emails and our Facebook feeds it is more than enjoyable. Yes, sir. It is addictive. You actually get dopamine hits mm-hmm. when you do that. When you see the little, a little alert. Yes. Yeah. You, you get, uh, and I, it's the there's rat. a whole bunch like of the research. rat with the cheese and yeah. Exactly. There's uh, Skinner's Rats um, where the, the rat gets a reward one in 20 times, but he keeps going back and doing it, waiting for that one in 20 reward. Uh, we go back and keep checking our emails, waiting for thinking that it might be some good thing in there that'll make us give us a dopamine it's very subconscious but if we're aware of this kind of stuff we can actually have a better chance of saying no to our email for 20 minutes just for 20 minutes Mm -hmm. and think of what you could get done if if nothing bothered you in the world if that really were your only to do in the world I mean, imagine if you woke up every morning and you only had really one to do in the world. Imagine how much Isn't love. is that called being retired? <laughs> <laughs> but you could create that mindset and imagine how much love and creativity you could give to things if you really only had one thing to do for 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I can see this already <laughs> applying this in my life. I mean, some of sure. these things where, you know, I think. Okay, I'm gonna set it. I'm setting aside this time, and this is what I'm gonna work on right now. And then this, that's what happens. Emails come in. Uh, you know, I'm talking to somebody else, and then I mean another. You know, some phone call. Ring, I mean, whatever it is. If you just like turn off that stuff and go, okay, I'm not going to check my email for 30 minutes. And that's you know? okay. And it's okay. <laughs> like that I don't, well, the cu- it's funny. I've had customers that literally because of my response, I, I mean, I've had customers in the past that literally an hour went by and I got a second email. I was like, Jason, are you okay? Is everything okay? I didn't get a response from you. Yeah. You know, and I think about that, how I've trained. Exactly. Yeah, you've tra- you've it's trained my them. fault. I've trained customers. I've yeah. trained my Family, I mean everybody. Yep. That I am so responsive. Right. Versus that if you don't reply you know, within the hour, then it's a problem. Right. Right. Yeah. And so I mean, though, I need some more nuggets. I want to get. Uh, I like this <laughs> stuff. I mean, this is well, no, because I can see how I can apply this to myself. Absolutely. I, mean, I by the way, I love what you just said about how we train the people around us in how often to bug us. Yeah. And that's funny. I'm right now. I'm writing the next episode, which is about boundaries. Oh, it's yeah. about how to create boundaries with your email and your phone and your personal time and all this, which is key for a, a dad who wants to have more time with his kids, et cetera. Right. Uh, but you just said something that I'm going to totally rip off, which is, you know, you we actually subconsciously train the people around us to, you know, either not or to do have boundaries. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a great, great insight. No, you just it's, gave me. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, whether it's our families or clients or friends yeah. or, or whatever, you know, it's up to us to establish 
what those boundaries are. And that totally makes sense where you could say, you know what? Um, I mean, I, I remember uh, reading the book, The Four Hour Work Week. Mm-hmm. And I tried to do the email twice a day thing. Mm-hmm. It didn't work for me. I don't know why. <laughs> but meanwhile, it was, you know, in the morning and then at night or in the morning and the afternoon is that's the time you check email. And you think about I think about how much time I spend in email. My email is open at all times. Oh, yeah. You know, I have 30 different email addresses for the different businesses and things I do or whatever. And I have so much email coming in. Not all of it requires response. But still, the time that it takes of looking at, reviewing it, putting it away, you know, organizing, whatever, how much productivity time is lost yeah. doing and that? In right. fairness to you, there really is an exception uh, to folks who have to be attentive to customer service because that's something that. Oh, sure. You know, but uh, yeah. again, you, but I could do two hours instead of 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. a customer will still it still feels important, even if I still get back to them within yeah, a couple of cool hours. Twenty four hours. But it, it, no, <laughs> I mean, I'm not joking. It was literally like an hour, and they were uh, they were not sure because it was during the day. Yeah. They were not sure if I was okay. <laughs> You know, that's that's funny. They're concerned about you. <laughs> well, yeah, she's like, "Are you okay?" And that's I said, how yeah. resp- that's how responsive you've been in the past. I've told, yeah, you you're always right there. You know, and it's yeah. just wow, I've created this. This is hospital? a monster that I've created, and I have to change. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, and and I'm assuming that we do the same thing with our children. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, with our kids, we expect that they're going to respond immediately. Yeah. Because that's what we desire. I was thinking about that with leaving friends or relationships, like the same type of thing. Like if you're always attentive to every single need, that if you I from that for whatever reason right they might think like you said there might be a problem well, and it's yeah. not it's just i'm i need my time i need to well, if you want space. something done give it to someone who's busy right <laughs> isn't that how it is you know because they'll get it done yeah exactly so i mean it was funny my 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 wife the other day said uh you know can you order um uh some vitamins on amazon and uh i literally had like two minutes that i was stopped somewhere and i ordered on Amazon boom, 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 boom. and she's you know I text her back and it said hey it's ordered and she's like are you serious <laughs> like literally it was done within you know 10 minutes she was expecting like maybe by the end of the day <laughs> right. or the next day or whatever she was just yeah. kind of she wasn't saying I need it right this second but you know Amazon <laughs> will bring it in two days but you know it was just that's my thought process and that's how I work it's like yeah. everything and especially if it's for somebody else like my spouse or my kids or whatever mm-hmm. it's a priority for me yeah you know it's like I, I gotta get this done immediately even though that's not not their expectation that's what happens right you know and i realize how much pressure that puts on myself yeah just now yeah. Well, <laughs> just realizing you're, you're kind of introducing kind of another side of the coin really which is by the way this uh you know you've just sort of referred to david allen's getting things done in where he talks about a two-minute rule which is okay if you've got a to-do that's not necessarily on your top priorities list but you can bang it out in less than two minutes go ahead and, and just bang and it the I heck do out. That, yeah. Um it's the question then is, you know, if you're doing if you're treating everything like that, that's when you'll never really Emergency. get the big projects yeah. done. But you just kind of reminded me of another great brain hack which is, you know, we're often running around going you know, I, I don't have time to do that right now because I got to, oh my God, I, and, and I, I don't have time to do this because I got to go out and I got to pick up so-and-so and I got to blah, blah, blah. And you get so freaked out about never having enough time that there are a whole bunch of things that you could do in a relatively short amount of time. And the way I sort of demonstrate this, and you guys will forgive me, and uh, I'm going to make you uncomfortable for just... <laughs> <laughs> I know that's like suicide on podcasts and radio, you know, dead airspace. Yeah. But what I just did, and our audience can't see this, is I pulled out while I was talking, I pulled out my iPhone, and I started a stopwatch. And I let that stopwatch run for 10 seconds. And that 10 seconds was felt brutal. like an eternity. Did <laughs> yeah. it not? Now, when I do this live in front of uh, people, uh, I did this uh, just uh, last year um, in uh, in London in front of about 300 people. And I, I was introduced uh, and I got up and I said, thank you. And I put up a slide that says, we will begin shortly. And then I pulled my phone out. I started my t- my timer and I waited 60 seconds. <laughs> Imagine that. And the people were starting to shuffle and g- grumble. Get and their phones out. Finally over, <laughs> I said, that was 60 seconds, but it felt like an eternity, didn't it? And uh, that's because 
60 seconds is an eternity. When you have if children, it's, it's even more. You know? <laughs> People who are single don't realize that. But then when you have kids, you realize how valuable a couple minutes is. Yeah. Like you really have a difference in time yeah. and a respect for time. Whereas like, you know, especially when you have a newborn baby and it's like 10 minutes of quiet mm-hmm. and you're just like, oh, they're sleeping right now. <laughs> like you don't re- let that what, element of time. What should, what should we do? Should yeah. we do something? No, I mean that element of time <laughs> is so amazing. Whereas somebody who's like single or younger or whatever is like, well, yeah, I got the whole afternoon off and yeah. I'm not sure what I should do. I'm going to sit on the couch or, you know, I mean like that's the whole thing that I remember as a single person. Like what should I do this afternoon? You know, yeah. versus, Okay. I have five minutes. What can I get done in five <laughs> right. minutes? No, it's a it's a great frame of mind if you can put yourself in it because you think about what that ten seconds felt like. Uh, it felt very pregnant and very you know yeah. Uh, yeah. But what I did was I forced everyone, including our listeners, to be very present. And imagine if you had one hundred times that ten seconds, one hundred times that how you might be able to get something banged off your to-do list. Mm -hmm. Well, that hundred times that 10 seconds is only 17 minutes. So (laughs) you can get a lot done in 17 minutes if you can just be totally present and go, all right, there's no problem here in the now. Let's do this. Well, I, you know, and it's somewhat related. I, I meditate in the mornings. Um, and, it's funny because before I started doing it, I was like, I don't have time to meditate. <laughs> I'm, I'm too <laughs> busy to point. meditate. Yeah, <laughs> which is the whole point of meditating anyways. Exactly. And now, I mean, I'm only doing seven minutes in the mornings. After I exercise, I sit down, I'm quiet, I'm still, and I close my eyes and I do it. It's the greatest thing in the world. And I need to learn to do it you know, more throughout the day of take just a minute 30 seconds, whatever it is, but I can see what exactly what you're saying of how powerful that is, is to just take a breath, take a couple breaths and stop. Um, it was even suggested to me by someone to, you know, for me to count, mm-hmm. you know, because I get so busy and so worked up over that busyness that the energy level is so high during the day that I feel like, and sometimes like my heart and my chest is heavy, my brain's on overload. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't think it's called an anxiety attack, but it's that, <laughs> it's like, it's that feeling of just overwhelm, you know, and yeah. the ability to just stop like that. I can imagine if you have then a disorder, you're like that all the time, you know, yeah. you're sort of, and you have to learn how to stop. Right. You have to learn right. how to breathe and, you know, pay attention to things. So, yeah, yeah. and it's very interesting. And very, there's, very interesting. there's plenty of research that says that what you're doing in just those seven minutes every morning is actually building your brain. It really is. Well, I can't, I won't I get said, into I can't it, imagine if research. I didn't do that, how you know, some of the difficulties I would face, right. you know, even more. I mean, yeah. just because I, I'm sort of trying to train my body to know how to stop. That's part of the daily practice. It's not, right. It doesn't matter if it's five minutes or an hour or whatever. It's kind of just, and that's, I mean, I was taught this of, you know, to sort of be able to train your body to stop. Mm -hmm. And I'm still having, I still struggle with it. I mean, there's no question. I still struggle on a daily basis. It's like, you know, I'll be in the middle of two o'clock in the afternoon and like I am jumping, you know, banging in all kinds of different ways and blah, blah, you know, and it's just, okay, stop. You know, I have an assistant here now who thankfully would be like, Jason, you just breathe, breathe, you know, (laughs) so it's good to have people around you. you, Notice it. Yeah. And and Jason, why don't you come down and see my ADD doctor too? (laughs) (laughs) Alan, you come along. I think we're we're both. I'm going to start with the video. Yeah. 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 We'll start start with the video. No, I I love it. I really do. I I think this is some great information information. That's, I mean, that's why I definitely thought, you know, I, I knew he would be a great guest. It's, no, sure. this is information that we all need to know. And it, as I said, it doesn't matter whether you're diagnosed or not. It's, um, these well, are the busy things lifestyle. That we kind of brought this up earlier is that you're constantly, uh, I mean, with technology, the way it is, you have, you have a leash, yeah. constant access to social media and email and people kind of texting you and then freaking out when you don't reply within the hour, <laughs> right. you know, that's ridiculous. Right. And it's just kind of funny. Like I remember when we were kids, we can all probably speak to this, right? We're around the same age group that we didn't have any of these things, these cell phones. Right. We just went outside. When's the last time we went outside without your cell phone? Well, I yeah. can't remember the last yesterday. Time. Wouldn't but, think of it. <laughs> well, I mean, like, but how long did you go? I mean, like, if, would you go to the mall or back, or would you go to like you know somewhere within hundred feet? <laughs> no, in fact, I, call, I for business, I called somebody who w- I was supposed to talk to, yeah. and somebody else answered and said, "Oh, uh, he left his cell phone in the office." Yeah, and I was like, 
what do you mean? You left the cell phone. Like, who leaves their cell phone? That's the point of a cell phone. It's, yeah, like, like, leaving, it's like leaving your head in yeah, the yeah, yeah. Who, who does that? Yeah. I'm not sure I can do business with him. Yeah, really. It's not constantly tethered to this thing. So are they, um, just kind of closing out here, are there any other uh, any other tips or hacks that we could give to the audience and just kind of quick quick things? Well, I, w- I would just say, generally speaking, and it really hats off to you for uh, meditating and, uh, and, and showing uh, the audience that you can get benefits from, of meditating in seven minutes a day, and you know. And yeah. I'll tell you what. Here's here's a brain hack. I call this meditation in motion. Most of us would, even if we acknowledge that there might be some real, true evidence based uh, benefits to meditation, might, would definitely argue. You know, I just don't have time to do that. Well, how about this? How about if you identify one daily activity that you're doing every day anyway that doesn't require you to be fully on? Example: your commute to work. Right. Yeah. Yes, you got to drive and not run over the old lady, but <laughs> you can pretty much do that while you're thinking about something else or walking your dog, which let's say it takes you 15 minutes to do that. And you do that twice a day or even once a day. Um, what if you were to, in the instance of walking the dog, put a piece of uh, duct tape, a bright yellow duct tape or something on that leash so that whenever and write on it, M in M st- standing for. Meditate in motion. And every time you went to grab that leash, you saw that tape and you thought, all right, that's right. What I'm going to do every time I walk the dog is I'm not going to let all the BS in my mind just go willy nilly. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to quiet my mind or at least listen to the voice that's going on in there and observe what it's talking about and see if I can get it to quiet down a little bit rather than just being on autopilot and not really getting anything therefore accomplished on my walk. What happens when you quiet your mind is that the window to creativity opens up wider. Mm -hmm. This is uh, well documented in research. Um, And what you find is, and this is why people have ideas in the shower. Hour, really, because you're because of the warm water and uh, it's yeah. a routine that you just go through. And it's a pleasurable thing. You end up walking out of the shower. Going, you know, I just realized that I, I can. Yeah, people talk about musicians. And musicians like that. have these. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. there's a way to meditate for someone who doesn't have any time to meditate. Just find or doesn't could, want to or doesn't want to. <laughs> yeah. And just try it. Just try being the witness to the crap going on in your head and see if you can quiet down a little bit. And I'll leave you with one more. Next time you're standing in line at Starbucks waiting to order your coffee and you reach reflexively for your phone because you're co- you're bored and you want to just but you can't sh- sit in quiet right you can't you can't have downtime not for 30 <laughs> seconds <laughs> do catch yourself and just leave it in your pocket and just allow yourself yeah. to be bored i just, just did that the there. other day yeah. I it's just a did great that. habit to form yeah. and uh, i'm doing it more and more and again when when you it allows your mind to get quiet it also allows your mind to rest yeah. because when you've got this phone in your hand you're zipping through headlines and this that and you your mind is just yeah. blasting through and it's fatiguing i actually look at people on their phones on their when phones, i'm in yeah. that mode when i actually i do the same thing i'll pull back i'm like you know what put this away and then i'll sit there and just sit back i'm going away from the mic and I almost Enjoying noticed the amount else, of people yeah. that are doing exactly what I should, you know, I told myself I'm not going to do yep. around the room. I'm like, wow, that was me a few no, seconds that's ago. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Some great tips. Um, you know, Alan, thank you. Yeah, I want to really uh, mention the website again. So we have addcrusher.com. Yeah. That's the the course and the instructional videos. Um, and then we also have crushertv.com, which weekly is a TV show. weekly a TV show Very about cool. these topics. So, yeah. Alan, just awesome work. Awesome yeah. work. I know you're, you're helping people you know, with productivity and, and AD, ADD, ADD and ADHD. Right. Um, and just doing some great work. I appreciate that and yeah. appreciate you coming by. Very it's, cool. It's, really it's fun. Yeah, really insightful stuff. If you want to learn more, if you want to talk to either Alan and uh, Jason, podcast at dudes2dads.com, the way you get a hold of us. And through Twitter, Facebook, and a variety of other methods. And we didn't mention uh, reviews. We reviews, do need thank reviews. you. Five-star reviews on iTunes or Stitcher. Please leave them. We really appreciate that. If you want to leave a review about this episode in particular, that'd be really great. I'm sure... Alan would love to see that. Yeah, and, uh, and we'll put yeah. all the information up on the, the web page for this episode. Right, exactly. Um, but on behalf of Alan and Alan. That's right. And uh, <laughs> thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks thank a lot. You. Take care.